Good morning. A little after 6.30 a.m. my time here. Lord, last night gave, uh, gave me an incredible night's rest. Just incredible. Went to, went to bed quite early last night and got not only sleep, but got some rest too, which was most needed. And uh, praise the Lord for it. I want to share with you something out of a book that I'm reading. Um, this is the book. Yeah, yeah. The Puritans. The Puritans. The Puritans, which were the Japhethian ancestors of this nation in America. Okay? The Puritans had a lot of doctrinal problems. They had a lot of issues. Yes, they did. That's why Puritanism more or less kind of failed. <laughs> but when it came to mortification of sin, when it came to practical advice on living, the Puritans had some things. The Puritans had some things. you got to remember, the Puritans were Calvinists. And Calvinism teaches that there is elect and non-elect. And also, Calvin is pretty much the one who, um, you know, that uh, reprobate doctrine like the new F, uh, NIFB guys preach. Uh, Calvin basically taught a, a pretty good variation of the reprobate doctrine in his uh, book, The Institutes of the Christian Religion. <laughs> Christian religion, yeah. But um, I want to share something with you out of this. It's very meat for what we are going to be talking about today. Because we're going to be talking about these ministries of flesh. These so-called ministers who operate only in the realm and sphere of the flesh. But we're going to talk uh, about that, but I want to share this with you. I want to share this with you. Now, from where my fingers are between here, this is what I'm going to read you. Okay? Where my fingers are right there between that. Go ahead and pause that and read it, if you will. Okay? So I'm going to be sharing with you. Check this out. Check this out. The loathsome carcass is afterwards laid in the grave, in which action, for the most part, the dead bury the dead. That is, they who are dead in sin, like these ministers of the flesh, Bury them who are dead for sin. Bury them who are dead for sin. Hmm. And thus, the godless and unregenerated, unregenerated worldling, worldling, I like that. You're a couple of worldlings. Interesting. Who made earth his paradise because this is the best that these devils are ever going to have, yes. His belly, his God. Belly, flesh. Hmm. More on that in a minute. His lust, his law. Hmm. Driven male, driven basically by his loins. Hmm. Yeah. As in his life he sowed vanity. So is he now dead, and reapeth misery. In his prosperity, he neglected to serve God. In his adversity, God refuses to save him. And the devil, who he long served, now at length pays him his wages, because the wages of sin is death. Detestable was his life. Damnable is his death. Hmm. The devil has his soul. The grave has his carcass. In which pit of corruption, den of death, and dungeon of sorrow. Let us leave the miserable sinner, rotting with his mouth full of earth. Because they are of the world, therefore they speak of the world, and the world hears them. Ministers of the flesh. Yeah his belly full of worms, 
and his carcass full of stench, expecting a fearful resurrection when the body shall be reunited with the soul, that as they sinned together, so they may be eternally tormented together. Very, very interesting, very meat, very meat for these ministers of the flesh. Ministers of the flesh. Get your authorized version of the scriptures. I attempted, note, I attempted to do this video yesterday. Two and a half hours worth. And as I was going to upload it, the Lord's like, no, Brad, no. And I know why. Praise the Lord that he does. Praise the Lord he doesn't allow me to upload things that he does not approve of. And things that he does let me upload that he doesn't approve of. He shows me why soon afterwards, why he wasn't really for it. Hmm. Romans chapter 16. Some familiar verses to start. Uh, our text for today that we are going to be looking at, we are going to be in Jeremiah chapter 28. But I, I want to start here. I want to start here. Romans chapter 16, verses 17 on to verse 18. And please, follow me along in the scriptures, word for word, verse by verse, as we go through this, okay? Now I beseech you, brethren, mark them which cause divisions and offenses contrary to the doctrine which ye have learned, and avoid them. Mm -hmm. For they that are such serve not our Lord Jesus Christ, but their own belly. Their own belly. And what is the belly? It is basically flesh, is it not? Hmm. And by good words and fair speeches deceive the hearts of the simple. Oh, good words and fair speeches. Hmm. A lot of these ministers of the flesh a lot of them are worthy of, as it is said, Oscar awards because they are incredible actors. Because remember, remember, it is the theater to these people. It is theater. And they use and promulgate the suspension of disbelief so wonderfully. These people are trained actors. Oh, they're very good. Very good actors, a lot of these people are. Very good. Like I said, um, worthy of Academy Awards, these people, some of these people are. But, you know, here in verse 18, for they, that, the, for they that are such serve not our Lord Jesus Christ, but their own belly. Mm -hmm. Their own belly. Of course, you go to Philippians. Philippians chapter 3. Well, I've shared this with you before, obviously. Philippians chapter 3, verses 18 on to verse 21. For many walk, of whom I have told you often, and now tell you even weeping, that they are the enemies of the cross of Christ, because the cross of Christ is death. Death. Death to yourself. Death to your own principles. Death to your own ideas. You're not a slave. You are a servant. You are not held at gunpoint to do anything. No, you are not. Not by God, not by the devil. No, you have free will to do. Okay, you're not forced. But the minute the Lord save you, you do belong to him. And granted, he's not going to force you to do anything. But it's, it's good for you to have our Lord's favor. It really is. It really is. For many of whom I have told you often and now tell you even weeping, they are enemies of the cross of Christ. A lot of these ministers of the flesh are also professional, career Christians. You know, you see some of these channels here on YouTube that have close to half a million subscribers. 
That's a lot of subscribers. Yeah. And you got these people who go off into a worldly facet and maybe a man needs to make a living, amen. But they try to take something that isn't of the church and living God and try to make it into something Christian. Hmm. Beware, brethren, of these career professional Christians. For unto them, this is just that. It is, it's a career. It's just a job. They are passionate in the fact that it is a career, not passionate because they care about those lost souls out there. It's just a career to them. It's just a uh, means to line their pocketbooks. But then again, there are those who are of the theater who do this kind of stuff. Their passion is that they enjoy, they enjoy reaping strife. They enjoy calamity because they themselves are clamorous. Hmm. And they all seek the applause, the approval of men these ministers of the flesh. They, like I said, they, they're actors. It's the theater to them. Okay? Whose end, verse 19 in Philippians chapter 3, whose end is destruction, whose God is their belly. Flesh is their God. You know, flesh is their God. <laughs> Uh, and whose glory is in their shame, who mind earthly things. Mm. Earthly things such as the praise and attention of men. I, I do beg your pardon, but um, I, I'm glad I have that there are less than 500 people who are subscribed to this channel that the Lord has given me. I'm glad of that. I, I, I am happy in that. Um, very much so. Very much so. Personally, I would prefer that, you know, I just remain this big in the sight of all these hot shot big shots here on YouTube. You know, just, just stay this little, little infinitesimal little thing over here, you know. Because what happens, I've seen this, I've seen people, um, these so-called, you know, Christians, boast about their numbers, you know. Well, I've got more subscribers than you, i got more views than you, blah, 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 blah. Ah, see, oh, so, you're a professional, huh? Career, huh? That's why I have, uh, I don't share the number of subscribers who subscribe to this channel that the Lord has given me. Uh, that, I've seen that. And especially in a select few people where they boast about their numbers of subscribers. And remember, they're Christians. I've seen that. I've seen that. And from the get-go, that was something like, you know, dude... <laughs> Okay, that, that's something you're going to boast about. Uh, that's why you don't see my subscribers. Excuse me. Beg your pardon. That's pride. Forgive me. I do have a pride problem. But uh, that's why you don't see the number of those who subscribe to this channel that God gave me. Not me, myself. For our conversation is in heaven. From whence also we look for the Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, who will change our vile, rotten, nasty body, that it may be fashioned like unto his glorious body. That glorious body after the death, burial, and resurrection. Okay? After. After. Half wit. After. The death, burial, and resurrection. Okay? 
according to the working whereby he is able to subdue all things unto himself. And Romans chapter 8, go back to Romans. Romans chapter 8. Romans chapter 8, verses 8 on to verse 13. So then they that are in the flesh cannot please God. And this, this is an argument that comes up. It's like, well, well hey, Brad, you, you know, you say that our spirit and soul is within the skin suit here. It's like, yeah, it is. Yeah. So we're in the flesh. No, no. What is he talking about? He's talking about that you are driven, live, living by operating, controlled by the flesh, meaning your neck deep in it, okay? That's what he's talking about, okay? So then they that are in the flesh cannot please God. But see, these ministers of the flesh that are neck deep into their uh, flesh, they are serving their little G God, who is Lucifer, yeah, yeah. And you can, know it. You can tell these people by their fruits, people. Look at their look at their content. Look at what they do. Okay, look at what they do. No doctrine, no instruction in righteousness, no edification, no comfort. All it is is pointing the finger and attack. That's all these people do. They're ministers of the flesh. They're ministers of Satan. <laughs> and everybody who they don't like, they call a Jesuit. Didn't your spiritual daddy teach you better than that little boy? <laughs> Even he will use ghost emails when he dare attempt. <laughs> Come on now, little boy. <laughs> but look, never mind, let's continue. So then they that are in the flesh cannot please God. But ye are not in the flesh, but in the capital S spirit. If so, be that the spirit of God dwell in you. Now there is a time and a place for everything. You know, read uh, Ecclesiastes chapter 3, okay? There is a time and a place for everything. But when you come across a minister of the flesh, you will tell that they will focus solely on one thing and neglect all the other, okay? Okay? People say to me, it's like, well, Brad, you rarely mention people's names. You're right. But interestingly enough, the people whom I'm addressing always seem to figure it out that I'm talking about them, don't you? Yes, you do. There are, of course, exceptions where, um, and unfortunately I've run into this, where I might not even be referring to someone at all, and they mistake that. Uh, I was speaking of them, but that's brought about because of a guilty conscience anyway. But see, there's a time and a place for everything. But when you come across these people who make attack their only sole thing that they do, you're dealing with the minister of the flesh, you're dealing with the minister of Satan. Okay? Now, if any man have not the Spirit of Christ, he is none of his. Hmm. Oh, you might very well be a faithful servant of the Antichrist, right? Oh, the Antichrist? Yeah, <laughs> you might as well. <laughs> and remember, the Antichrist isn't in Scripture. <laughs> remember that. I said that on purpose. <laughs> but... And if Christ be in you, the body is dead because of sin. But the spirit is life because of righteousness. Hmm. But if the spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwell in you, he that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken your mortal bodies, quicken, make alive, by his spirit that dwelleth in you. Therefore, brethren, we are debtors, not to the flesh, you know, not to the skin suit, like these wicked devils are, these ministers of Satan, okay? Therefore, brethren, we are debtors, not to the flesh, to live after the flesh. For if ye live after the flesh, ye shall die. 
Because the wages of sin is death. But if ye through the Spirit do mortify, put down the deeds of the body, ye shall live. And Colossians chapter 3. Of course, I had to come to Colossians chapter 3. Verses 1 under verse 7. I've shared this with you before, but it's very meat. We're talking about people who seek the attention of men, who seek the applause and favor of men, who have men's persons in admiration because of advantage. These are the same people who will make the enemy of their enemy their friend. <laughs> my enemy who is the enemy of my enemy is my friend? Uh, no. See, a lot of these people who are devils, what binds them together is not a love of our Lord Jesus Christ, not a love of the truth, not a love of the brethren, but hatred. Hatred is what binds these people together. And you can see, a lot of what they hate is usually poured out upon one man. You know? It, it's, it, that's always a... That's always the thing. It's like, and, and, and beg your pardon, I do have to use a name because it's, uh, and, okay, come on. It's an example. I have to use this man's name as an example. Mr. Brian Denlinger. Uh, people will, I mean, you see these guys. They, they focus so much on that man. And that man brings, <laughs> that man seems to bring these devils who hate him together. So the bond that binds these people together is hate. Not a love of the truth. Why? Because, because they operate in the flesh. They live in the flesh. They are in the flesh. And they are of the world. That's why. Okay? If ye then be risen with Christ. Uh, Colossians 3 verses 1 and verse 7. If Ye then be risen with Christ, if you are saved, born again, converted of the church of the living God, a new creature in Christ Jesus. Seek those things which are above, where Christ sitteth on the right hand of God. Set your affection on things above, not on things on the earth. For ye are dead, and your life is hid with Christ in God. Mm -hmm. If you are truly saved, born again, converted of the church of the living God. Amen. When Christ, who is our life, shall appear, then shall ye also appear with him in glory. Mortify, therefore, your members, which are upon the earth. Fornication, uncleanness, inordinate affection, evil concupiscence, and, con and covetousness, which is idolatry. Oh, covetousness, idolatry. All of these are forms of idolatry. We've, we've talked about that before. But covetousness. Coveting the praises of men. Having, having men's person, persons in admiration for advantage. You know, you brown nose are Christians. Yeah. Yeah. Praise God, I'm not a Christian. <laughs> but of the church of the living God, or the church of God. <laughs> For which things sake the wrath of God cometh on the children of disobedience. Now, we've talked about this at length before. Children of disobedience are not saved members of the church of the living God who get off into error or heresy or whatever, because that can happen. No, children of disobedience hear the truth of God the gospel, but choose not to obey, choose not to go the way of the cross unto our Lord Jesus Christ. They reject the gospel. You reject the true gospel of Christ one time, you're a child of wrath, you're a child of disobedience. Okay? Most of these people who do that, who cling to Christian, are ones who are thieves. They don't go through the door. Actually, they boot the door because they don't like the door, do, don't you? Yeah, they boot the door so they can go climb up another way. Hence, they're a thief and a robber. Mm -hmm. For which things sake the wrath of God cometh on the children of disobedience, 
in the which ye also walked sometimes, sometime, when ye lived in them. Let's read verse 8. But now ye also put off all these. Anger, oh, wrath, because it is not up to you to get even. Okay? Malice, blasphemy, filthy communication out of your mouth. It is not our job, it is not up to us to get even. And oh, hi, hi, hello. Oh, we want to get even, don't you? Don't we? We want to get even. And see, when you engage, unfortunately, with these devils, remember, a lot of them themselves say, we want to have dialogue with you. Dialogue is what? Going back and forth, back and forth, right? Okay? These devils, they are willing. That's what they want. They want to go back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And they will. <laughs> they will. Oh, wow. And they're your huckleberry. You want to be in a contentious uh, frame of mind? You want to be contentious, huh? These people are your huckleberry. They'll go, you, they'll go back and forth, back and forth. It will never end until somebody... <laughs> Stop! And it ain't going to be them. We're supposed to be different. Again, people, there is a time and a place for everything. Yes, there is. Yes, there is. Amen. Not, not even at all remotely disputing that. But these ministers of the flesh, they operate in the flesh. They seek men's persons because of advantage. They're actors. They're in the theater of deception, dear people, okay? And their content, oh, very good. It's appealing. It's appealing, yes. Why? Because it's flesh-driven. It appeals to your flesh. There are those out there when certain people will make certain videos about other people that their disciples of these certain people will be like, oh, he's making another one. Oh, who's he going to name? Who's he going to... Oh, oh. That's perverse to have that. I've seen it. I've seen it. These disciples of certain people, they they do, they, they relish in these things. I, I've seen it with my own two eyes. That they, oh boy, oh boy. They preface it, oh, here's another one. But when they're watching it, it's like, oh boy. Why? Because it riles up your flesh. Even I, before, uh, you know, watching some videos like that, I feel it's like your flesh gets riled up. It's very strange. It's very strange. It is to be a thing of mourning. But yet, the way it is done, it riles up the flesh. Brethren, these things ought not so to be. Now, let's go to Jeremiah chapter 28. I'm, I'm sure we've discussed Jeremiah 28 before. Where... <laughs> I can't tell you. I I have no idea where. Uh, I'm sure we've done things on Jeremiah 28 before. Uh, I'm sure we have. I, I actually think that video, uh, False Prophets and Preaching is Easy, might be one of them. But I don't know. I don't know. Uh, but we're going to have kind of an expository on this, on this chapter and on this subject. Because remember, the book of Jeremiah which is my favorite book in all of scripture. The book of Jeremiah is so pertinent for our instruction in righteousness today because coming death and destruction, it's, it's on the horizon. We of the church of the living God, we are going to be redeemed, resurrected, caught up, okay? The catching away of the body of Christ before the time of Jacob's trouble, okay? We're going to be caught up and we're going to get out of here. But what's going to come after the redemption of the purchased possession is the time of Jacob's trouble. Seven years of God's wrath upon this earth. And it's going to be marked by death. 
destruction, control by the Roman Catholic Church, who will be then openly in control of everything. They are secretly in control, okay? But see, the Church of the Living God is present on the earth right now. Hence, hence, he who now letteth will let until he be taken out of the way. The he is us, the body of Christ, the Church of the Living God. And once we get taken out of here, death is what's coming to so many of you. So many of you that get left behind, okay? And Jeremiah, who in fact was a prophet of the last days, last days there before Nebuchadnezzar was allowed to go in and just whoop the snot out of Jerusalem, okay? Jeremiah, before that was coming, he was preaching to these people, hey, you need to repent. You need to repent. You need to turn away from these things. Because see, it had gotten so bad. It had gotten so bad for them in Jerusalem. They had backslidden so horrifically that judgment was inevitable. They were going to be punished. They were going to receive God's judgment no matter what. But what could have been altered, what could have been different is the severity, the level of that judgment. Our Lord, and we will look at this. Our Lord says to him, hey, 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 Nebuchadnezzar's coming. He's going to whip the snot out of y'all, okay? Because you done messed up. You chose other gods. You set up idols in your heart. And you have followed after them, okay? And you have neglected me. You have chosen these things to your own hurt, okay? Judgment is coming upon you. You ain't getting away from it. But our Lord is merciful. And the severity is what could have been altered. But then again, but then again, they had a stiff neck. And then you got people like Hananiah coming around, preaching to them, you know, Things that they, uh, things that they want to hear, speaking exactly contrary to what the Lord said. Jeremiah chapter twenty-eight, beginning at verse one. And it came to pass in the same year, in the beginning of the reign of Zedekiah king of Judah, in the fourth year, and in the fifth month, that Hananiah, the son of Azor. The prophet, which was of Gabaon, spake unto me in the house of the Lord, in the presence of the priests and of all the people, saying, that is very important to note, in the presence of the priests and of all the people saying. So he made sure this Hananiah, which is identified as a prophet, false prophet, yes, but as a prophet nonetheless, okay, made sure that he had an audience, didn't he? But, but, but before we get into that, uh, a little about this King Hezekiah. Just, just a little on him. It's important. Go to 2 Kings chapter 24. 2 Kings chapter 24. Um, King Zedekiah was basically a puppet, pretty much. Pretty much was a puppet, a pushover, okay? He was a good old boy, as they like to say in uh, American jargon. Uh, 2 Kings chapter 24, let's read a little about this. Verses 17 on to verse 20. This is Zedekiah, okay? This is Zedekiah that we're reading about. This is interesting to note because you got to remember, those who are in authority are ordained of God, whether for judgment or for blessing or whatever. 2 Kings chapter 24, verses 17 on to verse 20. And the king of Babylon made Mataniah his father's brother king in his stead and changed his name to Zedekiah, his father's brother telling you that Zedekiah while a, was a half-brother of Nebuchadnezzar, okay? 
Why do you say that? Because his father's brother doesn't say anything about his It's It specifically says his father's brother. It doesn't say just his brother. So that implies to us that Zedekiah came from a different mama. Okay? Important to note. So Zedekiah was related on to the king of Babylon, Nebuchadnezzar. Very interesting to remember that. Especially uh, taking into account what happened to Zedekiah. Okay, let's continue. Zedekiah was 20 and 1 years old when he began to reign. And he reigned 11 years in Jerusalem. And his mother's name was Hamatul, the daughter of Jeremiah of Libna. So there's the mother. So apparently, like I said, though Zedekiah was related to the king of Babylon, they had different mamas, different mothers. Okay? But yet they had the same father. Okay? And he did that which was evil in the sight of the Lord. According to all that Jehoiakim had done. For through the anger of the Lord it came to pass in Jerusalem and Judah until he had cast them out from his presence that Zedekiah rebelled against the king of Babylon. Okay? This is that Hezekiah. And also let's go to Jeremiah chapter 38. Jeremiah chapter 38. Here's a little, okay, so that's who Hezekiah is. But let's look a, a little about what Jer uh, Jeremiah, what Zedekiah was like. What kind of a king was he? He was a pushover. Now granted, in a, a proper government, it is a government of the people, for the people, and by the people. Okay? That's how it's supposed to be. That's what that's supposed to mean here in America. But it's not. We're run by Catholicism. America is a papal nation. And when our Lord God, our Father, Jesus Christ, come back as king of not only the Jews, but of the whole world, uh, he's, he's going to be king. It's going to be a dictatorship. Okay? What our Lord says goes. Okay? But with that premise, okay, as king, he was responsible for the people. You know, you can read a very good comparison of that between Saul and David, you know. Saul blamed the people for what he did, but yet as king, he was responsible for the people, but blamed the people. King David, when he messed up and uh, the uh, angel of the Lord went to cause uh, cast judgment on Jerusalem, you know, when he numbered the people, King David is like, Lord, I'm the one who sinned. What have they done? But see, as king, he was responsible for the people, see. Keep that in mind when we read this here. Jeremiah chapter 38, verses 1 under verse 5. This, this is what King Zedekiah was like. He was a pushover, okay? He wasn't a king. He was an authority on the throne as a king, yeah. But he wasn't no ruler. No, no. Other people thought for him. He, he wouldn't know what to think unless someone thought it for him. Sad, doleful creatures like Zedekiah here. Then Sephatiah, the son of Matan, and Gedaliah, the son of Peshur, and Jukal, the son of Shalamai, Shalamiah, excuse me, and Peshur, the son of Malchiah, heard the words that Jeremiah had spoken unto all the people, saying, Thus saith the Lord, He that remaineth in this city shall die by the sword by the famine, and by the pestilence. But he that goeth forth to the Chaldean shall live, for he shall have his life for a prey and shall live. So see right there, verse 2 tells us that, okay, judgment was coming. People, judgment is coming. It's called the time of Jacob's trouble. You don't have to go through that. You can come to the Lord on his terms. And if you come to him on his terms, may he save you. And when he save you, he dwells within you. You are sealed until the day of, of redemption. And when he says, come up hither, you're going up. Okay? But see, judgment was coming. Impending doom was on the horizon. There was no getting away from it. But what could have been altered is the severity. If they would have acceded to it and just gone out to the king of Babylon... 
They would have been taken into captivity. Jerusalem would have been made desolate. Yes, because of their sin. Yes, but they would have lived. But if they were going to stiffen their neck and be stubborn, Thus saith the Lord, this city shall surely be given into the hand of the king of Babylon's army, which shall take it. Therefore the princes said unto the king, We beseech thee, let this man be put to death, meaning Jeremiah. For he, thus he weakeneth the hands of the men of war that remain in the city, and the hands of all the people, in speaking such words unto them. For this man seeketh not the welfare of this people, but the hurt. Jeremiah was saying, hey, repent, turn from your wickedness. Destruction is coming, but you do not have to be destroyed. That's the truth. That's what he was preaching, the word of God. He was preaching that unto the people. But they didn't want to hear that. In light of all the adversity that is going on, they didn't want to hear it. They wanted to hear smooth things, you know. They wanted to have their ears tickled. It's just scratching ears, you know. Pine needle tea, really good. They didn't want to hear the truth. Because the truth is often painful. Especially in light of impending doom. Okay? In verse 5, here's, here's the character of Zedekiah. He says it himself. Then Zedekiah the king said, Behold, he is in your hand. For the king is not he that can do anything against you. Because he was at the mercy of the people. And as it is said, governments should fear the people, not the people of the government, yes. But remember, this is a dictatorship. King. He was king. When our Lord Jesus Christ comes back, uh, he's going to be the dictator. He is going to be the king. Okay, a monarch. Okay? All right? We will be serving a king. And as the king here, Zedekiah said it himself, for the king is not he that can do anything against you. And with that, we have to remember in uh, Romans, cha uh, Romans chapter 13, verse 1, skipping ahead a little bit here, but Romans chapter 13, verse 1, just one verse, Romans chapter 13, verse 1, we have to remember, let every, Romans chapter 13, verse 1, let every soul be subject unto the higher powers, for there is no power but of God. The powers that be are ordained of God, allowed. For example, Smoking Joe and President Kamala Harris here in America, they are ordained of God. Not specifically chosen, but allowed, ordained. It's like, yeah. Why? For judgment upon this wicked nation of America. Okay? Yes. The, 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 the <laughs> let the subject, let the soul, let every soul be subject unto the higher powers. For there is no power but of God. The powers that be are ordained of God. And who is the prince of the power of the air? That would be Lucifer. He is here. Satan is the little G God of this world for judgment's sake, for judgment purposes. Okay, so King Zedekiah, as king, form of judgment against Israel. Okay, go to Second Kings now, chapter twenty-five. Okay, Second Kings chapter twenty-five. Go back there. Okay, Second Kings chapter twenty-five. You gotta remember something, brethren. <laughs> You gotta remember something. Destruction upon this earth is coming. And as we continue forward, we are going to see so many more of these ministers of the flesh come up and spread their propaganda and preach this one world, this new world religion. Okay? Being friendly with free gracers and the easy believism crowd. Yeah. Yeah. Jeremiah, uh, Jeremiah, 2 Kings chapter 25, verses 1 on to verse 7. 
And it came to pass in the ninth year of his reign, in the tenth month, in the tenth day of the month, that Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, came, he and all his hosts, against Jerusalem and pitched against it. And they built forts against it round about. And the city was besieged unto the eleventh year of King Zedekiah, who was related unto King Nebuchadnezzar. And on the ninth day of the fourth month, the famine prevailed in the city, and there was no bread for the people of the land. And the city was broken up, and all the men of war fled by night by the way of the gate between two walls, which is by the king's garden. Now the Chaldees were against the city round about, and the king went the way toward the plain. And the army of the Chaldean, Chaldees pursued after the king and overtook him in the plains of Jericho, and all his army were scattered from him. So they took the king and brought him up to the king of Babylon to Ribla, and they gave judgment upon him. And they slew the sons of Zedekiah before his eyes and put out the eyes of Zedekiah and bound him with fetters of brass and carried him to Babylon. So hence, that's what happened to Zedekiah. Okay? And they put out... The last thing King Zedekiah ever saw with his own eyes before it got put out was the death of his own sons. That's Zedekiah for you. That's Zedekiah for you. Puppet. And it's so telling about these... Uh, these guys here in office here in America, like, you know, Kamala Harris, President Harris, and Smoking Joe, um, these guys who served the Vatican. And eventually, their own eyes are going to be put out <laughs> by the one whom they, who set them up and whom they served. Isn't that something? But now back in Jeremiah chapter 28, verse 1 again, okay, that's a little about Zedekiah. That was, that was meat to address that, okay? And it came to pass the same year in the beginning of the reign of Zedekiah, king of Judah, in the fourth year and in the fifth month that Hananiah, the son of Azor, the prophet, which was of Gabaon, spake unto me in the house of the Lord, in the presence of the priests and of all the people, saying, in the presence of the priests and the people. He had to have an audience. These devils, these ministers of the flesh who have men's persons in admiration because of advantage, they want an audience. They need an audience. Why? Because they're actors. It's all the theater. Matthew chapter 23. Okay? Let us remember this about these, these charlatans and also these wicked ministers of the flesh. Let us remember this about them. Matthew 23, verses 5 on to verse 7. But all their works they do for it to be seen of men. They make broad their phylacteries and enlarge the borders of their garments and love the upper most rooms at feasts and the chief seats in the synagogues and greetings in the markets and to be called of men, Rabbi, Rabbi. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Got to have an audience. They See, he didn't do that privately to Jeremiah. No, because the whole point of it is to puff up the flesh, to raise the flesh. Okay? So they need an, an audience. And go to John chapter 5. John chapter 5. A little bit more about these wicked devils. Okay? A little bit more on this. John chapter 5, verses 41 on to verse 44. Our Lord Jesus Christ speaking. I receive not honor from men. And see, these devils, ministers of the skin suit, okay, they seek honor from men. But I know you, that ye have not the love of God in you. Ah, yeah, yeah. I am come in my Father's name, and ye receive me not. If another shall come in his own name, seeking his own glory, yeah, him ye will receive. Again, I ask you, how can ye believe which receive honor one of another and seek not the honor that cometh from God only? Hmm? Big part. Big part. Hmm? 
Yeah. These people seek the applause of men. They seek the honor of men. These people, these cheerleaders, the rah, rah, rah type of thing. What they do is they, they puff up the flesh. That's why their content is so ah, interesting, isn't it? It's appealing. Why? Because it's fleshly. It's all fleshly. How can ye believe? <laughs> How can ye believe which seek honor one of another and seek not the honor that cometh from God only to get a little pat on your head by your spiritual daddy, right? You people. This is children, brethren. We're dealing with children. We are truly dealing with children. And of course, John chapter 12, verse 43, another thing to remember about these people. John chapter 12, verse 43, just one verse. And this, this is so telling about these ministers of the flesh. For they loved the praises, the praise of men more than the praise of God. Well, their little G God, Satan, is praising them. Why? Because he gives them the biggest audiences. <laughs> Don't they? Doesn't he? They get the biggest audiences. Whether they're buying that audience or whether or not they're itching ears and just giving people what they want to hear. And you want to hear this stuff, don't you? I know these attack videos, right, that people make, it, 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 it appeals to the flesh. Like I said, I've seen in people, I've seen in people how they get they get little like giddy like a little schoolboy about these types of videos. Why? Because they're fleshly. They're flesh driven. And remember, Satan savor at the things that be of man, not the things that be of God, because remember, Satan will eat the dust all the days of his life, and we are dust. Okay? Remember? For they love the praise of men more than the praise of God. Yeah. Yeah, that's exactly what these people are, brethren. And of course, Luke chapter 16. Luke chapter six, 16. Luke chapter 16. Verses 13 on to verse 15. You're either or. There's no middle ground. A lot of these devils are... Buddy, buddy with these uh, easy believism devils. No servant can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will hold to the one and despise the other. Ye cannot serve God and mammon. Now, mammon, we always say that's money, but yes, remember, people make mammon, things of, that are pertaining to the flesh. They make flesh God, okay? God was manifest in flesh, yes, but the flesh itself was not God, okay? <laughs> I'm not even going to go there. It's, uh, I'm not even going to go there. But, okay, you cannot serve God and mammon. Either or. There's no middle ground. You can't have it both ways. You can't have your cake and eat it too, okay? You either or, no middle ground. And the Pharisees also who were covetous, whom the Lord abhorreth, he abhorreth covetousness, heard all these things and they derided him. And he said unto them, Ye are they which justify yourselves before men. Well, he did something against me. I'm going to do it back to him. He did. And there's that cycle that never ends unless somebody stops it. Like I said, these devils, they're your huckleberry. Okay, Those of you Christians out there who really like, oh, get into that, go, go ahead. Fill yourself up to the teeth with that kind of stuff. Afterwards, you ought, you know, like, you try to sit through one of these videos. It's like, oh, man, I need to go wipe myself. I feel dirty. Why? Because it's all a flesh, brethren. It's all flesh. And he said unto them, Ye are they which justify yourselves before men, because they have men's persons in admiration. But God knoweth your hearts. Yes, he sure does. 
For that which is highly esteemed among men is abomination in the sight of God. Your big career, you've made it. You've gotten to the upper echelon. Sorry to steal one of your quotes there, uh, dear friend. <laughs> but yeah, they've made it to the upper echelon. Yeah. Yeah. Why? Because they have men's persons in admiration because of advantage. Beware, brethren. Beware. They have to have an audience. They have to have an audience. Back to Jeremiah chapter 28, verse 2. Now, Hananiah, he had his people. He had to do it in front of his audience. And remember, he's a prophet. Here's what he says. Verses 2 on to verse 4. Thus speaketh the Lord of hosts. He begins with thus speaketh, not a thus saith, even though he will go on to say thus saith. When he's cornered. Very interesting. But, okay, so notice too in verse 1 that Hananiah, the false prophet, the prophet, right? He sought out the true prophet. Note that. The false will always seek out the true, won't they? I, I, and I've encountered this. People who just want to come over to you and uh, over by you and butter you up and flatter you to death. And then all of a sudden, for no, un, for no reason, turn. It's like, we saw something off in him. What? Then they go off in some weird uh, direction and whatnot like making uh, things that don't even make sense, okay? But the false sought out the true in front of everybody to perform his little act. The false prophet sought out the true prophet in front of everybody, making sure he had a, uh, uh, an audience so he can glorify himself and make himself look good. While all the while defaming the true prophet and what he was truly preaching to the people. Oh, gee, we don't see any of that today, do we? Thus speaketh the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, saying, I have broken the yoke of the king of Babylon. Within two full years will I bring again into this place all the vessels of the Lord's house that Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, took away from this place and carried them to Babylon. And I will bring again to this place Jeconiah, the son of Jehoiakim, king of Judah, with all the captives of Judah that went into Babylon, saith the Lord. See, there he says, saith the Lord. For I will break the yoke of the king of Babylon. Mm. Mm. Is that what God really had said? Yea, had God said? Is that what really, was that really what the Lord was saying? Jeremiah chapter 25. What did God actually say? Okay? Because one of them two is lying. Okay? The false prophet went to seek out the true prophet in front of everybody so he can make a spectacle, so he can perform his little act. Remember, these people are in the theater. Okay? And then he said something. Now, we do not get the response of the people in this. No, we do not. But... That's something that's like, yeah. And as we already saw in Jeremiah chapter 38, okay, they wanted to hear something of that was uplifting, encouraging. Well, the true encouragement was saying, hey, guess what? Your rear end's going to be whooped. Accede to it and repent of your idolatry and it won't be so bad. What, but what did God truly say? Jeremiah chapter 25, verses 8 on 2, verse 11. Check this out. Okay? Jeremiah chapter 25, verses 8 on 2, verse 11. Therefore, thus saith the Lord of hosts, because ye have not heard my words. Behold, I will send and take all the families of the north, saith the Lord, and Nebuchadnezzar the king of Babylon... Don't look at me. See that? My servant. The Lord called Nebuchadnezzar, of all people, his servant. And of course, you read Daniel chapter 4. Uh, yes, King Nebuchadnezzar, we're going to see him in heaven. I have no bow to doubt it. No bow to doubt it. But right there, he called him his servant. Okay? 
And unlike others who the Lord will allow to do things, um, King Nebuchadnezzar acceded to that in Daniel chapter 4. Read Daniel chapter 4. But calls him his servant. And will bring them again into this land and against the inhabitants thereof and against all these nations round about and will utterly destroy them and make them an astonishment and an hissing and, a, and perpetual desolations. That's what God has said. Death, doom, destruction is coming. You ain't getting away from it. Let's continue. Moreover, I will take from them the voice of mirth and the voice of gladness, the voice of the bridegroom and the voice of the bride, the sound of the millstones and the light of the candle. And this whole land shall be a desolation and an astonishment. And these nations shall serve the king of Babylon 70 years. 70 year captivity. So the Lord definitely was saying through Jeremiah, the true prophet was saying, look guys, this is, we've, we're done. We need to get on our knees, our face to the ground. It's like, Lord, we deserve this. In our punishment, please remember mercy. Okay? Judgment is coming. But the severity of that judgment is the only option some of you have left. You're going to die one day. You're, again, you devils. <laughs> You're not going to repent on your deathbed and then somehow live your entire life speaking against the church of the living God, promoting Catholicism, preaching hate, sowing strife and discord and contention your entire life, but yet on your deathbed? You know, you know, here, drink up, you know, cheers, buddy, yeah. Yeah, keep drinking. Yeah, <laughs> keep drinking that Kool-Aid, okay? Judgment is coming. The severity is what can be different. Jeremiah now, chapter 26, verses 2 and verse 9. Thus saith the Lord, tell him, saying to Jeremiah, the true prophet, okay, who wasn't very popular, who had so many going against him, with, you know, saying things that people wanted to hear. Thus saith the Lord, stand in the court of the Lord's house and speak unto all the cities of Judah which come to worship in the Lord's house all the words that I command thee to speak unto them. Diminish not a word. If so be, they will hearken and turn every man from his evil way that I may repent me of the evil which I propose to do unto them because of their evil doings. The evil that they, he proposed to do unto them. Judgment upon Jerusalem for what they did was coming regardless. But the evil of the captivity, they were going into captivity. But how they were going to be entreated during that captivity could have been changed. Okay, And with some, as we see in the book of Daniel, okay, who weren't defiled by the king's meat, who stood by what God had said, okay, stood for God, okay, they were taken well care of in captivity. But those who harden their neck, okay? Verse 4. And thou shalt say unto them, Thus saith the Lord, If ye will not hearken to me, to walk in my law, which I have set before you, to hearken to the words of my servants, the prophets, whom I sent unto you, both rising up early and sending them, but ye have not hearkened, then will I make this house like Shiloh, and will make this city a curse to all the nations of the earth. So the priests and the prophets and all the people heard Jeremiah speaking these words in the house of the Lord. See, God would rather be merciful. And that house, the house, where was he speaking? The temple, okay? And Nebuchadnezzar destroyed the temple, okay? Had they had 
repented, sought the Lord, and acceded to his judgment, their captivity would have been less severe, and evidence there, the house, the temple, probably would not have been destroyed as it was. Because they brought their detestable things into the temple. Get a load of that. They brought their pagan things within the church of the living God. And they are they who justify themselves before men. Yeah. 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 And, and of course now, go to Jeremiah chapter 6. Jeremiah chapter 6. Jeremiah chapter 6. Come on, fingers, work with me. Jeremiah chapter 6, verses 9 on to verse 14. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, They shall thoroughly glean the remnant of Israel as a vine. Turn back thine hand as a grape gatherer into the baskets. To whom shall I speak and give warning? That they may hear, behold, their ear is uncircumcised. They cannot hearken. Behold, the word of the Lord is unto them a reproach. They have no delight in it. Well, yeah, because it kills you. <laughs> it kills your self-righteousness. Especially in the light of what's coming. Yeah. They don't delight in the truth. They just want to hear things that itch their ears. And for, you know, and gratify the flesh. And Satan will give you all kinds of people out there who will do that. And you love it, don't you? Don't you? Hmm. To whom shall I speak and give warning that they may hear? Behold, their ear is uncircumcised, and they cannot hearken. Behold, the word of the Lord is unto them a reproach. They have no delight in it. Therefore, I am full of the fury of the Lord. I am weary with holding in. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. I will pour it out upon the children abroad and upon the assembly of young men together. <laughs> For even the husband with the wife shall be taken, the aged with him that is full of days, and their houses shall be turned unto others with their fields and wives together. For I will stretch out my hand upon the inhabitants of the land, saith the Lord. For from the least of them, even unto the greatest of them, everyone is given to covetousness. Whether it's money to set up your own little petty kingdom, whether it's your Christian career, whether it's the praises of men, everyone seems to be given over to covetousness. And from the prophet even unto the priest, everyone dealeth falsely. They have healed also the hurt of the daughter of my people slightly, saying, Peace, peace. There is no peace. First Thessalonians. Of, co of course we had to go here. Of course, with reading that, of course we had to go here. First Thessalonians chapter 5, verses 1 on to verse 3. But of the times and the seasons, brethren, ye have no need that I write unto you. For yourselves know perfectly that the day of the Lord so cometh as a thief in the night. For when they shall say, Peace and safety, then sudden destruction cometh upon them, as travail upon a woman with child, and they shall not escape. <laughs> very, very interesting tie in there. But see, and back to Jeremiah chapter 28, from verses 2 on to verse 4, Hananiah is speaking clearly against what the Lord truly said. And all the while, now we don't have the people's reaction, but you can gauge that by in Jeremiah chapter 38, which we already heard, okay, the people, in light of all this stuff, it's like, give me something to distract me. And oh, Satan with all his little fleshly ministers, you know, with their, their useless little channels that just 
puff up flesh and all they do is attack they because they're inept they can't do anything else but see they can sure puff up that flesh because their stuff is what very interesting it it, it snags your flesh right it's intriguing isn't it the priests bear rule by their means and the people love to have it so and what will you do in the end thereof so this Hananiah who had an audience was speaking unto them smooth things prophesying deceits and clearly it's not what the Lord was saying at all and then I was a false prophet. Let's continue now. Picking up at uh, verse 5. Then the prophet Jeremiah said unto the prophet Hananiah in the presence of the priests. Note that. Okay? Because remember, from verses 2 on to verse 4, sounds really good, doesn't it? It sure does. It sounds good. God loves you. God's not mad at you. God's not judging you. God wants you to be happy. But God, there's a condition to these things. You have to be broken of your self-righteousness. You have to come to him on his terms and be saved. Not boot the door out of the way and climb up some other way, you thief and robber. But it sure does sound good, doesn't it? It sure does. Oh, it sounds, sounds sweet to the ear. So smooth, isn't it? Yeah. Then the prophet Jeremiah said unto the prophet Hananiah, in the presence of all the priests, and in the presence of all the people that stood in the house of the Lord, even the prophet Jeremiah said, Amen! Yeah! Yeah, buddy! Yeah! Amen! The Lord do so. Yeah. <laughs> Bravo. Yeah. Amen. The Lord perform thy words which thou hast prophesied to bring again the vessels of the Lord's house and all that is carried away captive from Babylon unto this place. Yeah. Ra ra ra. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Ooh. Let's get to reality now. Verse 7. Nevertheless. See, verses 2 on to verse 4, that's fantasy. It's entertainment. It's theater. They had an audience, didn't they? <laughs> but, okay. <laughs> but, verse 7. Nevertheless, hear thou now this word that I speak in thine ears. And in the ears of all the people. Oh, is Jeremiah about to burst some bubbles? Yeah. Verse 8. The prophets that have been before me and before thee of old prophesied both against many countries and against great kingdoms of war and of evil and of pestilence. And the minor prophets before this time, you know, like such as Hosea, you know, Isaiah prophesied of some of the, uh, against some of the stuff, you know, that was coming, you know, you know, okay. The people were without excuse. You're without, ex you're, you're without excuse, okay. You've heard the truth. But no, you, you want you, you want to have that flesh puffed up. Go ahead. Go ahead. Live it up. Live in your flesh. Go ahead. <laughs> Go ahead. You, you know what that reminds me of? That, remi <laughs> that reminds me of uh, uh, Ecclesiastes verses, uh, uh, Ecclesiastes 11 verse 9. <laughs> Rejoice, O young man, in thy youth, and let thy heart cheer thee in the days of thy youth, and walk in the ways of thine heart, <laughs> and in the sight of thine eyes. But know thou that for all these things God will bring thee into judgment. Therefore remove sorrow from thy heart, and put away evil from thy flesh for childhood and youth. A vanity, little boy. But the people were warned. 
They had ample warning. They couldn't say, what hit us? God's judgment. Verse 9 in Jeremiah chapter 28. The prophet which prophesieth of peace, when the word of that of the prophet shall come to pass, then shall the prophet be known that the Lord hath truly sent him. And of course, Deuteronomy chapter 18. I beg your pardon. Sorry about that. No beard or anything. My lips just get, ugh. Deuteronomy chapter 18. Deuteronomy chapter 18. We want verses 20 on to verse 22. Deuteronomy chapter 18, verses 20 on to verse 22, the close of the chapter. But the prophet which shall presume to speak a word in my name, which I have not commanded him to speak, or that shall speak in the name of other gods, even that prophet shall die. Oh boy. And if thou say in thine heart, how shall we know the word which the Lord hath not spoken? When a prophet speaketh in the name of the Lord, if the thing follow not, nor come to pass, that is the thing which the Lord hath not spoken. But the prophet hath spoken it presumptuously. Thou shalt not be afraid of him. Now you got to remember, in the Old Testament, the Spirit of God was not a permanent resident in people. He could come and go, okay? Okay? Eternal security was not in the Old Testament, okay? Why? Because that seal of the Holy Ghost, which is the Lord, the Lord is that Spirit, was not there, okay? And hence, a prophet would be the mouthpiece of the Lord, like Elijah gives the, probably the best um a definition of a prophet, where it's like, uh, in front of the Lord, I speak in the Lord, in front of the Lord before whom I stand. Uh, right offhand, I can't remember that verse, but Elijah says something around the lines like, uh, in front of the Lord before whom I stand. Okay, The prophet in the Old Testament was the mouthpiece of the Lord giving revelation unto the people. We have the completed revelation of God in Scripture. Okay, Those who prophesy today are, are number one, saved, born again, converted to the church of the living God, having the Lord living within them, the Lord speaking to you through the scriptures. That is prophesying today, okay? That is to be noted, okay? But if the prophet says something and it comes to pass, that's what the Lord has said. But then the contrast comes up about, remember the magicians in Egypt? When Aaron uh, threw down his rod and, and became a serpent, and the magicians threw down their rods and it also became a serpent and became serpents, but Aaron's rod swallowed up their rods. Okay, remember they poured uh, Moses poured blood, uh, poured water out on something and it became blood. The magicians were able to do the same thing. They called frogs. And the magicians of Egypt were able to do the same thing. So there is a point that Satan can mimic. We've, we've talked about this before. There is a point and things that Satan can mimic. But the deeper truth, the deeper things, they can only go so far. They can only go so far. And about that. You know, God shall give them over. You know, how it says in uh, 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, verses what? Uh, 10 unto 12, about because they receive not the love of the truth, therefore God shall send them strong delusion. Okay? Because why? They love not the truth. And Satan will be allowed to pull off certain miracles to make it look legitimate. But on that, Deuteronomy chapter 13. Verses 1 under verse 5. If there arise among you a prophet or a dreamer of dreams and give it thee a sign or a wonder, and the sign or the wonder come to pass, whereof he spake unto thee, saying, Let us go after other gods, which thou hast not known, and let us serve them. And these people who do these, you know, these Christians who do these things, 
And the sign of wonder, not, you know, like calling lightning <laughs> lightning bolts out of the sky or, or shooting lightning bolts from betwixt your buttocks. No, 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 no. Think realistically. Signs of wonders. Oh, they got half a million subscribers, right? Oh, they're rolling in the dough. Oh, people are following them. People, they're, you know, ah, they're hooked. Oh, their flesh is gratified. Yeah, rah, rah, rah. Okay? Now, this is literally, of course, but you've got to remember, we're looking at this. This is our instruction in righteousness. There are many out there, these Christians, these career professional Christians, a lot of things are coming. Signs and wonders are coming to pass right before your eyes, ain't they? Half a million subscribers. They're set up pretty good, ain't they? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, they're living. They're going to tell you how good they got it. Yeah. You cannot serve God and mammon. Thou shalt not hearken unto the words of that prophet or that dreamer of dreams. For the Lord your God proveth you to know whether ye love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul. Well, God doesn't. No, no, God knows. Who is he whose heart is being proved to who? You. We don't even know our own hearts. God knows my heart. He sure does, you scoundrel. Yes, he sure does. But you don't even know your own heart. See, you may have a certainty that you may react or do something godly in a situation, but then you get put in that situation there, hot shot. You don't know your own heart. How quick are some of you going to be deceived by someone, a minister of flesh, speaking great swelling words, having men's persons in admiration because of advantage, huh? Because, hey, they get a big audience so they can puff up their own selves. Puff everybody up in the flesh, why don't they, huh? You don't know your own heart. He who trusteth in his own heart is a fool. And the fool says in his heart, there is no God. Ye shall walk after the Lord your God and fear him and keep his commandments and obey his voice and ye shall serve him and cleave unto him. Here's something scary. Now today, these false prophets, well, no, we don't go and stone them, no. Remember, vengeance belongs unto the Lord. Vengeance is mine, I will repay. I, hey, look, I struggle with one. I want to get even too, I really do. But we're supposed to be different. God's the one who will avenge us. Okay? It's not up for us to get even. That's not talking about self-defense. Okay? Okay? That's the difference between someone, heat of the moment, attacking you, and you got to resort to fighting or to shooting them. That's totally different. Okay? Getting even. Vengeance is his, not ours. And look at these people. Get your toes stepped on. You want to step on back? Hi, I do too. But brethren, we gotta we gotta remember we are supposed to be different. We're not supposed to do what they do. There's a time that I know there is. Shut up! I know that. Bless your heart and soul. I know that. See, the difference is if that is the main. If flesh is what you're pushing, or flesh is all that you're watching, brethren, you're watching the minister of Satan. Here's the warning. And that prophet or that dreamer of dreams shall be put to death because he has spoken to turn you away from the Lord your God, which brought you out to the land of Egypt and redeemed you out of the house of bondage to thrust thee out of the way which the Lord thy God commanded thee to walk in. So shalt thou put the evil away from the midst of thee. And we are to put away the evil with all malice from us, aren't we? These people are going to pay. You're going to pay there, guys. You're going to pay for it. So I, like I've said before, I hope, I hope these devils, you know, these ministers of the flesh 
I, I really hope these guys are living the best life that they can because this is it. How tragic. What a waste. Some of these devils, I mean, they, they've they got talent, but they're using it for Satan. <laughs> Such a waste. Such a waste. Jeremiah chapter 28 again, picking up at 10, verse 10. Now, okay, Jeremiah just kind of rained on every, popped everyone's balloon, Okay. And Hananiah made sure that in front of the people, he spake these great swelling words, itching their ears, speaking smooth things onto everybody. And Jeremiah was even himself like, yeah, man, yeah. Uh, no, let's get re back to reality here. It's not going to happen, buddy. Vengeance belongs unto who? So, the false prophet went to seek out the true, to try to humiliate the, the true prophet and to speak against what God has said. And he made sure that he had an audience. Okay? And he spoke these great swelling words that ah, hooked everybody and was really appealing. Then Jeremiah, he was like, yeah, sounds good, but brought people back down to earth. And not to be outdone, not to be outdone, the false prophet Goes at Jeremiah once again. But this time he adds a little bit more to the performance to, to put on that dis, the suspension of disbelief that he was actually the real deal, see? He, he adds a little bit more to it. Yeah, they have to keep going. They go back and forth unless someone stop. Verse 10. Then Hananiah the prophet he wasn't going to be outdone. He wasn't going to let that happen. You know, he's got to have the last word. You know, got to get even, don't you? Yeah. <laughs> then Hananiah the prophet took the yoke from off the prophet Jeremiah's neck and break it. You know, theater. Theater. And about this yoke, we're going to look at this, okay? We're going to look at this. Then Hananiah the prophet took the yoke from off the prophet Jeremiah's neck and break it. And Hananiah spake in the presence of all the people, specially to be noted there, saying, now he says, he was backed into the corner. Remember, he's, he did say, thus saith the Lord, from verses 2 into verse 4, but his whole discourse began, thus speaketh the Lord. Saith, speaketh. Hey, 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 guess what? Things that are different, they ain't the same. Hate to break that to you there. Hot shot. But, okay, verse 11. Then Hananiah spake in the presence of all the people, saying, Thus saith the Lord. It's not going to be outdone. He, he's, I, hey, everybody, see, I'm a true prophet. See, check this out. <laughs> Thus saith the Lord. Even so will I break the yoke of Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, from the neck of from the neck of all nations with, within the space of two full years. Let's read that again. And Hananiah spake in the presence of all the people, as an audience, saying, Thus saith the Lord, even so will I break the yoke, off, yoke of Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, from, uh, from the neck of all nations within the space of two full years. And the prophet Jeremiah went his way. Jer Prophet Jeremiah went his way. About this, go to 1 Kings chapter 22. 1 Kings chapter 22. Remember, people are going to heap to themselves teachers having itching ears, okay? 1 Kings chapter 22. So, the people who preach a false gospel, who you know, puff up the flesh, inflame the flesh. They're going to increase. Uh, 1 Kings chapter 22, verses 10 under verse 12, okay? And the king of Israel and Jehoshaphat, the king of Judah, sat each on his throne, having put on their robes in a void place in the entrance 
of the gate of Samaria, and all the prophets prophesied before them. Oh yeah. And Zedekiah, the son of Canana, made him horns of iron. See, theater. Made him horns of iron. Theater. Showmanship. And he said, Thus saith the Lord, With these shalt thou push the Syrians until thou have consumed them. And all the prophets prophesied so, saying, Go up to Ramoth Gilead and prosper, for the Lord shall deliver it into the king's hand. There, will be, there are so many out there who are going to tell people just what they want. There are so, This king, King Ahaz, or Ahab, uh, Ahab, had all these prophets to tell him what he wanted to hear. And then, uh, what was it, Micaiah here, the one prophet who spoke truth, and Ahab said, I hate him because he never speaks good to me, but evil. That evil was truth. And Ahab didn't want to hear it, but he had a whole bunch of false prophets speaking to him smooth things. Okay? Don't forget that. Don't forget that. Ahab had a whole bunch of prophets to just tell him what they what he wanted to hear in the name of the Lord. Okay? And of course, as I have made several references onto, now let's let's look at this, okay? And this is also echoed in the New Testament as well. But Isaiah chapter 30. Isaiah chapter 30, verses 8 on to verse 11. You ought to know these by heart. Now go, write it before them in a table, and note it in a book, that it may be for the time to come, that it may be for the time to come forever and ever. A witness, testimony. They were without excuse. That this is a rebellious people, lying children, children that will not hear the law of the Lord, which say to the seers, See not. We don't want to hear that. And to the prophets, prophesy not to unto us right things. Speak unto us smooth things. Prophesy deceits. Just like the uh, prophets of Ahab and just like Hananiah has done. And why are they doing that? Get you out of the way. Turn aside out of the path. Cause the Holy One of Israel to cease from before us. I I've been sent testimonies uh, or evidence about how many people talk about their Jesus wouldn't do that, their Jesus wouldn't say that. Yeah, their Jesus is that man of sin, the son of perdition. But the Jesus Christ, God our Father of the Scriptures, oh yeah, he does have a habit on raining on people's parades and popping bubbles. Okay, he really does. Now go go to Jeremiah chapter twenty four. Jeremiah chapter 24. Jeremiah chapter 24, verses 4 under verse 10. Again, the word of the Lord came on to me. This is important, okay? This is the thing about the figs. We could read this whole chapter, but we're just starting at chapter 4, okay? The thing about the, the yoke that Hananiah made a big spectacle to break in front of everybody to give the audience to shoe that he was actually somebody. You know, actually speaking for the Lord. Okay? But this is the significance of this. Okay? This is the parable about the figs. Okay? The two baskets. Again, the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Jeremiah 24, verses 4 unto the close of the chapter. Thus said the Lord, the God of Israel, like these good figs, so will I acknowledge them that are carried away captive of Judah, whom I have sent out of this place into the land of the Chaldeans for their good. Exceed to the punishment that's coming to you and the good figs. You'll have mercy in captivity. You're going into captivity. You will surely be punished. Okay? He's a just, fair, righteous God. He has to do that. But, but, it's like, yes, yes, Lord. I deserve worse. I'm going to do what you say. May you have mercy to me. In, your, in captivity. Okay? Verse 6. For I will set mine eyes upon them for good, and will bring them again to this land, and will build them, and not pull them down, and I will plant them, and not pluck them up. 
and I will give them an heart to know me, that I am the Lord. And they shall be my people, and I will be their God, for they shall return unto me with their whole heart. Has Israel done that today? No. No future prophecy. But, point is, accede to what's coming. And the punishment wouldn't have been so bad. And there were those of Jerusalem at that time who did that. You today, to instruct us, doom is coming. You need to get saved. You need to know that you aren't a good person. You cannot save yourself, okay? You're not righteous. You're not good, okay? You can't boot the door out of the way and climb up some other way. That's a thief and a robber. You'll end up in hell. You need to come to the Lord broken of your self-righteousness. Have godly sorrow, contrition. It's your fault. And fear the Lord and call upon his name. And may he save you. And you know what? See, lost people can't understand this, but you who are saved, you do. It's not a step one, step two, step three. Are you saved, brother? No. That happens in a fluid motion. Okay? I, I, can't exp I can explain it to you through Scripture, but see, you're lost. You're not going to get that. You're not going to get it because you're not saved. You Booted the door out of the way and climbed up some other way. Brilliant, isn't it? Brilliant, isn't it? Let's continue. Now, the contrary. And as for the evil figs, the stiff-necked ministers of flesh, which cannot be eaten, they are so evil. Surely, thus saith the Lord, so will I give so will I give Zedekiah, the king of Judah, and his princes, and the residue of Jerusalem that remain in this land, and them that dwell in the land of Egypt, and I will deliver them to be removed into all the kingdoms of the earth for their hurts, to be a reproach and a proverb, a taunt and a curse in all places whither I shall drive them. And I will send the sword, the famine, and the pestilence among them, till they be consumed from off the land that I gave unto them and to their fathers. Okay? Okay? The, 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 uh, the good figs and the bad figs, okay? Okay? Now, go to Matthew chapter uh, 15. And remember, God said for him to make a yoke. God said for him to make a yoke. And he put that yoke upon him. Jeremiah said, go, make a yoke and put it upon you one second. Okay, sorry about that. Jeremiah chapter 27, verse 2, the significance of the yoke. Jeremiah chapter 7, uh, verse 1 and 2. In the beginning of the reign of Jehoiakim, the son of Josiah, king of Judah, came the word unto Jeremiah from the Lord, saying, Thus saith the Lord to me, Make thee bonds and yokes and put them upon thy neck. So the Lord did told him to do that. For yes, because the Jews require a sign. But yet, then again, the false prophet Hananiah came and broke those things. Again, just furthering rebellion against the Lord. And here in the parable of the figs, you see? Now, let's continue. Go to Matthew chapter 15. Matthew chapter 15. He did that whole spectacle thing, okay? He made sure that there was an audience. And then he further broke the yoke, which the Lord said for him to do. Okay, further speaking against what the Lord had clearly said, right? Okay, going against clearly what the Lord had said. Okay, and let's go back to Jeremiah chapter 28, okay? Verse 11. And Hananiah spake in the presence of all the people, saying, Thus saith the Lord, even so will I break the yoke of Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, from the neck of all nations within the space of two full years. And again, like I said, that breaking of the yoke, again, furthering, going against what God had truly said, digging his, making his grave far worse, digging that pit so deep that Hananiah would never come out of it. The naughty, evil fix. Look at verse 11. Jeremiah here, at the end of that. And the prophet Jeremiah went his way. 
in the court of public opinion, there was no way, no way Jeremiah was ever going to succeed, was he? No, because why? The false prophet had the people on his side, didn't he? He, he, he spoke what they wanted to hear. He riled up the flesh. He even gave signs and wonders. See, that's what these devils do. They try to, they manipulate the people, crowd control, to get the people on their side by giving them what they want. And Jeremiah he so went his way. Why was that? Matthew chapter 15, verses 13 on to verse 14. But he answered and said, Every plant which my heavenly Father hath not planted shall be rooted up. Let them alone. They be blind leaders of the blind. And if the blind lead the blind, both shall fall into the ditch. And of course, see, we have to remember the condition of the people in Jeremiah chapter 44, okay? Jeremiah chapter 44. Jeremiah chapter 44. After they got the snot whooped out of them, Gedaliah was set up as a vice regent, if you will, in Jerusalem after he came and destroyed Jerusalem. Okay? Gedaliah was set up. And then Ishmael came and slew him. And they chased off Ishmael and whatnot. And then they wanted to go to Egypt. But they went to Jeremiah under a false pretense. It's like, hey, pray to the Lord for us. And whatever the Lord says, we're going to do. And see, they were hoping that the Lord would say, go to Egypt. But again, the Lord burst their bubble. And it's like, no, don't go to Egypt. He, they, he said, the Lord specifically said, don't go into Egypt. And what did they do? They said to Jeremiah, the true prophet, they say to him, what? The Lord hath not said unto thee, thou shalt not go into Egypt. But Baruch, the son of Neriah, set it thee on against us. So they were told specifically what not to do. They went and asked the Lord what was his will. He told them his will. They still said, we're doing it anyway. Jeremiah chapter 44, verses 15 on to verse 19. Let them alone. Blind leading the blind. Jeremiah chapter 44, verses 15 on to verse 19. Then all the men which knew that their wives had burned incense unto other gods, and all the women that stood by, a great multitude, even all the people that dwelt in the land of Egypt and Pathros, answered Jeremiah, saying, As for the word that thou hast spoken unto us in the name of the Lord, we will not hearken unto thee. What do you do? What do you do? What do, you do? God's not forcing anything on anybody. Neither is Satan uh, forcing anything on anybody. You have the will to choose. You really do. And you won't hear, even though you've been warned. But not, ah, you get snared by these ministers of the flesh. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But we will certainly do whatsoever thing goeth forth out of our own mouth. We're going to do what we're going to do, and we're going to twist the scripture to justify our pagan standing. Yeah. To burn incense unto the queen of heaven, and to pour out drink offerings unto her, as we have done, as we have done, we and our fathers, our kings and our princes, in the cities of Judah and in the streets of Jerusalem. For then had we plenty of victuals, and were well, and saw no evil, pouring out uh, drink offerings unto the Queen of Heaven. Oh, Semiramis, the Roman Catholic Mary. Y'all Catholics. Yeah. But since we left off, since we, okay, we put away our paganism, but and we tried to do this stuff, but now it's better for us to return to the pagan. But since we left off to burn incense to the Queen of Heaven, and to pour out drink offerings unto her, we have wanted all things and have been consumed by the sword and by the famine. And when we burned incense to the queen of heaven and poured out drink offerings unto her, did we make her cakes to worship her? <laughs> and pour out our drink offerings unto her without our men? Uh, one, one verse in Proverbs. One verse in Proverbs. 
Uh, Proverbs chapter 23, verse 20. <laughs> Up to dosage there, pal. Okay. Uh, Proverbs chapter 23, just one verse. Verse 20. Be not among wine bibbers, among riotous eaters of the flesh. Let's read verse 21. For the drunkard and the gluttony shall come to poverty, and drowsiness shall clothe a man with rags. Yeah, do not be amongst wine bibbers and riotous eaters of the flesh. Ministers of flesh, that all they are, and all they are about, and all they promote is all fleshly. Hello, people? But you want that, don't you? Your flesh wants it. You can't stop watching it, can you? you poor thing, you. You know, every once in a while, brethren, it's a good thing to just step away. Step away! Game over, man! Okay? It's healthy to step away from these things every once in a while. Or else it consumes you. Why? Because it's fleshly. These social media things. Well, truth is out there. There are those out there who do hold to absolute truth. Amen, amen. But the majority of it, are, I would say about 95% of what you see here on these social media, YouTube, um, BitChute. Uh, what's that other dumb one? Uh, Rumble. Yeah. And uh, uh, Brighton and um, Odyssey. You know, these, I mean... These social media platforms, you can find truth on them, but 95% of it is all fleshly. This is the easier way to get truth out for people to come across truth, but the Lord has uh, the Lord um, has called so few of us. But the Lord has called so few of us. And the devil has sown many tares amongst the wheat. Well, look at him. They want your attention. They want your attention. They're like, hi, look at me. Now, where were we? Go now to 2 Timothy chapter 4. 2 Timothy chapter 4. Okay. We're almost done. We're getting there. 2 Timothy chapter 4. Verses 2 under verse 4. If I can't get there. Preach the word. Be instant in season, out of season. Reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. See, these guys focus on only one aspect. When someone who is a minister of the word of our Lord Jesus Christ called to a position as this, it's to encompass everything. Okay? It's to encompass everything. Exposing heretical doctrine. Exposing the heretics that are associated with those perverse pagan doctrines. Yes, yes. But it is also encouragement, edification, building up. See, the ministers of flesh, all they are about flesh and destruction, death, for the wages of sin is death. Why? Because they are ministers of the flesh, not of the spirit. Okay? For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lusts, Shall they heap to themselves teachers, having itching ears, in verse 4, and they shall turn away their ears from the truth, and shall be turned on to fables. You like it. You like it. Don't you? It satisfies the lust. To watch these pagans, these devils, these idolaters, these worshipers of men, don't you? Why? Because they're ministers of flesh, not of the spirit. And of course, let's go to Matthew chapter 10. Matthew chapter 10. Jeremiah went his way because he knew he was going to prevail nothing. See, these devils have the the court of public opinion on their side. They have flesh on their side. We, Church of the Living God, who do we have on our side? Matthew chapter 10, verses 14 on to verse 15. 
And whosoever shall not receive you nor hear your words, when ye depart out of that house or city, shake off the dust of your feet. Verily, I say unto you, it shall be more tolerable for the land of Sodom and Gomorrah in the day of judgment than for that city. Shake the dust off your feet, brethren. Just like Jeremiah here, go back to Jeremiah 28, verse 11. And the prophet Jeremiah went his way. What was he going to do? Now, the true prophet. Now, the false prophet will always seek out the true and to do his thing publicly to be seen of men and always preach contrary to the word of the Lord, which was clearly given in order to perform in the theater. But then when the true prophet brings down the people down to earth and into reality, not to be outdone, the false prophet will go right back up and do a big shoe, dance and struts his stuff upon the stage to be heard of no more. These ministries, these fleshly ministries, they are tales told by an idiot full of sound and fury signifying nothing. Verses 12 on to verse 14. Then the word of the Lord came unto Jeremiah, the prophet, after that Hananiah, the prophet, note that, had broken the yoke off of the neck of the prophet Jeremiah, saying, Go and tell Hananiah, saying, Thus saith the Lord, Thou hast broken the yokes of wood, but thou shalt make for them yokes of iron. For thus saith the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, I have put a yoke of iron upon the neck of all these nations, that they may serve Nebuchadnezzar king of Babylon, and they shall serve him. And I have given him the beasts of the field also. Verse 13. So Jeremiah went to him privately, said, Hey, man. <laughs> Uh, thus saith the Lord, Thou hast broken the yokes of wood, but thou shalt make for them yokes of iron. Why? Because he made the people believe in a lie. Jeremiah chapter 27 now, okay? Verses 1 on to verse 18. I know we jumped ahead a little bit, okay? Verses 1 on to verse 18 in Jeremiah chapter 27. In the beginning of the reign of Jehoiakim, the son of Josiah, king of Judah, came this word unto Jeremiah from the Lord, saying, Thus saith the Lord to me, Make thee bonds and yokes, and put them upon thy neck. Again, the significance of that. And send them to the king of Edom, and to the king of Moab, and to the king of the Ammonites. Edom, brother to Jacob. Moab, Ammonites, Lot's descendants. Okay, And to the king of Tyrus, and to the king of Zidon, and by the hand of the messengers which come to Jerusalem. Unto Zedekiah king of Judah, and command them to say unto their masters, Thus saith the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, Thus shall ye say unto your masters, I have made the earth, the man and the beast that are upon the ground, by my great power, and by my outstretched arm, and have given it to it unto whom it seemed meet unto me. And now I have given all these lands into the hand of Nebuchadnezzar, the king of Babylon, again my servant. And the beasts of the field have I given him also to serve him. And all nations shall serve him, and his son, and his son's son, until the very time of his land come. And then many na nations and great kings shall serve themselves of him. And it shall come to pass that the nation and kingdom which will not serve the same Nebuchadnezzar, the thing between the good and the bad figs, okay, the king of Babylon, and that will not put their neck under the yoke of the king of Babylon, that nation will I punish, said the Lord, with the sword and with famine and with the pestilence until I have consumed them by his hand. See, Hananiah breaking that yoke off of Jeremiah's neck, oh, that was very significant. That was a public rejection of God's truth, God's word, God's warning. And I'm sure the people were like, yeah! Therefore, hearken not 
ye to your prophets, nor to your diviners, nor to your dreamers, nor to your enchanters, nor to your sorcerers, which speak unto you, saying, Ye shall not serve the king of Babylon. Yea, hath God said? Yea, hath God said? <laughs> Ministers of flesh. Yea, hath God said? For they prophesy a lie unto you, to remove you far from your land, and that I should drive you out, and ye, and ye should be, and ye should perish. But the nations that bring their neck under the yoke of the king of Babylon and serve him, those will I let remain still in their own land, saith the Lord, and they shall till it and dwell therein. I spake also to Zedekiah, king of Judah, according to all these words, saying, Bring your necks under the yoke of the king of Babylon and serve him and his people and live. Why will ye die? Thou and thy people by the sword, by the famine, and by the pestilence, as the Lord has spoken against the nation that will not serve the king of Babylon. Why would you die? Why would ye die? Because this means way too much to you. That's why. Flesh is a, see, these devils, flesh is their God. Flesh is their God. Not the God who dwelt within that flesh. But no, this is God to them. This is God to these devils. You know them by their fruits. Okay? Therefore hearken not unto the words of the prophets that speak unto you, saying, You shall not serve the king of Babylon, for they prophesy a lie unto you. For I have not sent them, saith the Lord. Yet they prophesied a lie in my name. The Lord hath not sent you guys. Obviously. Your little G God has, but my God, my Father, our Lord Jesus Christ, hath not sent you, obviously. Okay? That I might drive you out, and that ye might perish, ye and the prophets that prophesy unto you. Also I speak to the priests, and to all this people, saying, Thus saith the Lord, Hearken not to the words of your prophets that prophesy unto you, saying, Behold, the vessels of the Lord's house shall now shortly be brought again from Babylon, for they prophesy a lie unto you. This is Jeremiah 27, but before Jeremiah 28, is that not what Hananiah did? Peace, peace! There is no peace. The only peace you can have it's the peace that when you need to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. That's it. That's it, buddy. Hearken not unto them. Serve the king of Babylon and live. Wherefore should the city be laid waste? Judgment was coming. Submit unto that and it will go well with you. You're not going to go unpunished. But submit. Repent. For it's too late. But if they be prophets, <laughs> and if the word of the Lord be with them, let them now make intercession to the Lord of hosts, that the vessels which are left in the house of the Lord, and in the house of the king of Judah, and at Jerusalem, go not to Babylon. Yeah. <laughs> that they go not to Babylon. Okay? And that's the whole thing. About these false prophets. Like I said, God would want God wants everyone to repent. Okay? But see, flesh is their God, flesh is their ministry. This is what they talk about. They are of the world, therefore the world heareth them. The Lord hath not sent these prophets, but they ran. They ran. Okay? They ran. Verse 15 in Jeremiah chapter 28. Then said the prophet Jeremiah unto Hananiah the prophet, Hear now, Hananiah. Are you listening, boy? Huh? The Lord hath not sent thee, but thou makest this people to trust in a lie. Jeremiah chapter 23, verses 16 on to verse 22. Jeremiah chapter 23, verses 16, on to verse 22. 
Thus saith the Lord of hosts, Hearken not unto the words of the prophets that prophesy unto you. They make you vain. <laughs> yeah. They speak a vision of their own heart and not out of the mouth of the Lord. They say still unto them that despise me. The Lord has said, You shall have peace. And they say unto everyone that walketh after the imagination of his own heart, No evil shall come upon you. For who hath stood in the counsel of the Lord, and hath perceived and heard his word? Who hath marked his word and heard it? Behold, a whirlwind of the Lord is gone forth in fury, even a grievous whirlwind. It shall fall grievously upon the head of the wicked. The anger of the Lord shall not return until he have executed, until he have performed the thoughts of his heart. In the latter days he shall consider it perfectly. Verse 21. I have not sent these prophets, yet they ran. I have not spoken to them, yet they prophesied. They ran. They ran to the, like Hananiah here. He ran to the people to get an audience. He runs to the forefront to get a, a mass of people to look at me so I can perform in the theater of deception. Okay? They run to the forefront. They want to be noticed. They run up front. They want everyone to look at me. Look at me. When the true people of God, we don't want notoriety. We don't want a half a million subscribers. We don't want thousands of subscribers. We don't want notoriety. We want the Lord to be known. But see, these ministers of the flesh, I mean, look at them. How many channels do they have? <laughs> Come on. They run. They're false prophets. They're ministers of the flesh. Okay? They run. They run. Look at me. Look at me. Give me an audience. Yes. I have not sent these prophets. Yet they ran. Someone who is of the Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, of the church of the living God, we're snails when it comes to that. Unless the Lord's like, hey, speak on this. Like, okay. Okay, but, you know, we, we don't want the limelight. We don't want to be up here. We don't want people. We don't want our own disciples. We don't want underlings who we are going to send out to do their, our dirty work for us. No, we don't want that kind of stuff. We want the Lord to be glorified. We don't have minions. We don't have our disciples, our little ites, <laughs> as they, as people like to call call them, their little ites, you know. You you figure that one out for yourself. But see, these false prophets, they run to the front. They want to be known. They want the notoriety. They want an audience, and they speak things that just tickle the flesh. That's all because that's all they're about. They have not the spirit. For the natural man receiveth not the things of the spirit. Because why? They're, they're natural. They're unregenerate. They're lost. And it's just starting, brethren. Oh, it's going to get worse. You watch. You watch. Verse 22 in Jeremiah 23. But if they had stood in my counsel and caused my people to hear my words, then should they, then should have, then they should have, excuse me, turned them from their evil way and from the evil of their doings. No, but they encourage fleshly behavior in people. Go ahead and just leave a comment and go away. Yeah, they encourage fleshly behavior. Not mortification. They encourage devilment. Don't you? <laughs> they sure do. And of course, Deuteronomy chapter 13. See that? Verses 6 on to 11. Deuteronomy chapter 13, verses 6 on to verse 11. Lord have not sent these people, but yet they run. He has not spoken to them, yet they ba 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 prophesied. Deuteronomy chapter 13, verses 6 on to verse 11. 
If thy brother, the son of thy mother, or thy son, or thy daughter, or the wife of thy bosom, or thy friend, which is as thine own soul, entice thee secretly, saying, Let us go and serve other gods, which thou hast not known, thou nor thy fathers. And on this, kind of jump ahead here a little bit. Galatians chapter 1. Galatians chapter 1. Verse 6 on to verse 12. God is a spirit. God was manifest in the flesh. Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. Okay? Genius. The Jesus that these people are preaching. Galatians chapter 1, verses 6 on to verse 12. I marvel that ye are so soon removed from him that called you into the grace of Christ unto another gospel, which is not another. But there be some that trouble you and would pervert the gospel of Christ. But though we or an angel from heaven, oh, they're so sweet, aren't they? Yeah. Preach any other gospel unto you than that which we have preached unto you, let him be accursed, or as they like to say, anathema. As we said before, so say I, say I now again. If any man preach any other gospel unto you than that ye have received, let him be accursed. For do I now persuade men or God? For if I yet pleased men, I should not be the faithful servants of Antichrist. Oh, excuse me. I should not be the servant of Christ. But I certify you, brethren, that the gospel which was preached of me is not after man. Not after man, not after flesh. Back to Deuteronomy chapter 13, picking up at verse 7. Namely, of the gods of the people which are round about you, nigh unto thee, or far off from thee, from the one end of the earth even unto the other end of the earth. Thou shalt not consent unto him, nor hearken unto him, Neither shall thine eye pity, neither pity him, neither shalt thou spare, neither shalt thou conceal him, but thou shalt surely kill him. Thine hand shall be first upon him to put him to death, and afterwards the hand of all the people. And thou shalt stone him with stones that he die, because he hath sought to thrust thee away from the Lord thy God, which brought thee out of the land of Egypt from the house of bondage. What are we reading to? Verse 11. And all Israel shall hear and fear and shall do no more any such wickedness as this is among you. Hence, when people get are exposed as heretics, if they are truly heretics, you are to put them away with all malice. But then again, you got these career Christians, these professionals, who are more interested in the uh, traditions of men rather than truth. Hmm. And uh, Ezekiel chapter 13. Ezekiel chapter 13. Got to be careful, brethren. Ezekiel chapter 13, verses 1 on verse 9. And the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, Prophesy against the prophets of Israel that prophesy, and say thou unto them that prophesy out of their own hearts. Hear ye the word of the Lord. Thus saith the Lord God. Woe unto the foolish prophets that follow their own spirit and have seen nothing. O Israel, thy prophets are like the foxes in the deserts. Ye have not gone up into the gaps, neither made up the hedges for the house of Israel to stand in the battle in the day of the Lord. They have seen vanity and lying divination, saying, The Lord saith, and the Lord hath not sent them. And they have made others to hope that they would confirm the word. Why? Because they get an audience. <laughs> The enemy of their enemy is their friends to these people. These are warped, deluded, perverse people. Okay? They really are. 
Verse 7, Have ye not seen a vain vision? And have ye not spoken a lying divination? Whereas ye say, The Lord saith it, albeit I have not spoken. Therefore thus saith the, saith the Lord God, Because ye have spoken vanity and seen lies, therefore behold I am against you, saith the Lord God. Oh, ex, uh, judgment against uh, work isn't executed speedily. Therefore, your heart is set in you to do evil, yes. Oh, but you're going to pay, boy. You're going to pay. All of you. You're going to pay for it. That's why. Have a good life. I hope, what, what's today's date? Today's the, uh, uh, the 8th. Oh, I hope you have a really good day. I hope everything goes well for you. Because this is the best you're going to get. Okay? And mine hand shall be upon the prophets that see vanity, and that divine lies. They shall not be in the assembly of my people, neither shall they be written in the writing of the house of Israel, neither shall they enter into the land of Israel. And ye shall know that I am the Lord God. Yeah. Dangerous business for these false prophets. Back to Jeremiah chapter 28. We're almost done. We're almost done. Verse 16. Let's read verse 15 and 16 again, okay? Then said the prophet Jeremiah unto Hananiah the prophet, Hear now, Hananiah. The Lord hath not sent thee, but thou makest this people to trust in a lie. Verse 16. Therefore thus saith the Lord, Behold, I will cast thee from off the face of the earth this year. Thou shalt die, because thou hast taught rebellion against the Lord. So Hananiah the prophet died the same year, in the seventh month. I hope that's not true for some people. But Isaiah chapter 5. This is game to you guys, isn't it? It is. It's entertainment. It's 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 game. It's the theater to you people. This ain't a game. And you're playing with fire. All of you. All of you false out there. And some of you who know better. Yeah. Don't hurt yourselves by patting yourselves on the back, okay? Isaiah chapter 5, verses 20 on to verse 25. Woe unto them that call evil good and good evil, that put darkness for light and light for darkness, that put bitter for sweet and sweet for bitter. Woe unto them that are wise in their own eyes and prudent in their own sight. Woe unto them that are mighty to drink wine and men of strength to mingle strong drink, which justify the wicked for reward. The applauses of the praises of men. Maybe sometimes this too. Who knows? And take away the righteousness of the righteous from him. Therefore, as the fire devoured, devoured the stubble, and the flame consumeth the chaff, so their root shall be as rottenness. Rotten. If the root is bad, the fruit will be bad. Yeah. And their blossom shall go up as dust, because they have cast away the law of the Lord of hosts and despised the word of the Holy One of Israel, which every single one of these heretics do. <laughs> and Jeremiah chapter 7. Jeremiah chapter 7. Verses 17 on verse 20. Seest thou not what they do in the cities of Judah and in the streets of Jerusalem. Do you not see people, brethren? The children gather wood for their masters, for their spiritual daddies. Yeah. And the fathers kindle the fire. I have zero respect for someone who isn't man enough to take on their own responsibilities. But no, they will give these little morsels to their little underlings. I have no respect for people like that. To the both of you. No respect. 
No respect for that. As the man is, so is his strength. Be the man. You fall upon us. Huh? No, but you send it all. Your little minions. Yeah. 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 Both of you. Both of you. Okay? The children gather, the, gather wood, and the fathers kindle the fire. And the women, <laughs> Mystery Babylon, need their dough to make cakes to the Queen of Heaven and to pour out drink offerings unto other gods that they may provoke me to anger. Boy, that's a very telling verse, isn't it? Do they provoke me to anger, said the Lord? Do they not provoke themselves to the confusion of their own faces? Mm. Therefore thus saith the Lord God, Behold, mine anger and my fury shall be poured out upon this place, upon man and upon beast, and upon the trees of the field, and upon the fruit of the ground, and it shall burn and shall not be quenched. Ezekiel chapter 13. See that? Ezekiel chapter 13. Verses 10 on to verse 16. Because, even because, they have seduced my people, saying, Peace! And there is no peace. And one built up a wall... And lo, others daubed it with untempered mortar. Say unto them which daub it with untempered mortar, that it shall fall. It shall fall. There shall be an overflowing shower, and ye, O great hailstone, shall fall, and a stormy wind shall rend it. Lo, when the wall is fallen, shall it not be said unto you, Where is the dobby wherewith ye have daubed it? The, these devils, these ministers of flesh, like I said, the common bond that binds these people is hatred for other flesh. Flesh is their bond, not the spirit. Hence, these people would turn on each other in a heartbeat. And they have. Well, most of them do it to put on the, you know, because they're in the theater. They're actors. They do it to make it look like they're at odds with one another. It's fake. It's all, it's all, it's a performance. It's a show. They're actors. <laughs> That'd be a good thing to give these people rewards. You know, uh, little statues. <laughs> statues for their great performances. Yeah. Therefore, thus said the Lord God, I will even rend it with a stormy wind in my fury, and there shall be an overflowing shower in mine anger, and great hailstones in my fury to consume it. So will I break down the wall that ye have daubed with untempered mortar, and bring it down to the ground, so that the foundation thereof shall be discovered, and it shall fall, and ye shall be consumed in the midst thereof, and ye shall know that I am the Lord. Thus will I accomplish my wrath upon the wall, and upon them that have daubed it with untempered mortar. And will say unto you, The wall is no more, neither they that daubed it. To wit, the prophets of Israel, which prophesy concerning Jerusalem, and which see visions of peace for her. And there is no peace, saith the Lord God. 2 Timothy chapter 2. 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 2 Timothy, ah, 2 Timothy chapter 3, beg your pardon, brethren, 2 Timothy chapter 3, verses 24 unto verse 26, and the servant of the Lord, and the servant of the Lord must not strive, but be gentle unto all men, apt to teach, patient, in meekness, instructing those that oppose themselves. You're, you know, sometimes, most often than not, you are your own worst enemy. You know, devils can whisper sweet nothings into your ears, but 
Again. 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 Again! It's this that is usually your worst enemy. Case in point. Yeah, uh, by the way, it was 2 Timothy chapter 2, not verse uh, 2 Timothy chapter 3. Excuse me. I was right the first time. 2 Timothy chapter 2, verses 24 on to verse 26. I beg your pardon. Okay. And the servant of the, of the Lord must not strive, but be gentle unto all men, apt to pe teach, patient, in meekness, instructing those that oppose themselves. If God, peradventure, will give them repentance to the acknowledging of the truth. And remember, repentance doesn't mean repentance. It actually means belief. Yeah, that's God said. And that they may recover themselves out of the snare of the devil who are taken captive by him at his will. And what is the condemnation of the devil? Pride. You know, I've told you before, I got a pride problem. You smack me, I want to smack you back ten times harder with a brick. But we're supposed to be different. And even Jeremiah the prophet went his way. So we're supposed to be different. And I'll fight you. And I shouldn't. I shouldn't. I shouldn't. Because that's what they do. And we're supposed to be different. There is a time in it. Read Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verses 1 on to verse 9, okay? There's a time and a place for everything, yes. Even Paul's like, do you want me to come to you uh, with a rod or in meekness? Okay, there's a time and a place for everything, yes. But if every single time of all that you do is attack, that, that's not a ministry of the spirit, that's a ministry of the flesh, dear people. And the snare that these people are snared in of the devil is what? Pride. You know, there's a certain young man. Um, I, unfortunately, because I have a pride problem, I, am, I can spot pride in people. Why? Because I see it when I look in the mirror. It's a daily struggle with me. Every day, man. I got to fight this pride. I have a pride problem. Okay? But I can see it in others who make themselves professionals, who turn the faith into a career. I can see pride. Why? Because I can see it in myself. And I can see it readily in several people. But until people get humbled of their own pride, you know, lower your pride. And say, oh, well, why don't you take some of your own medicine? You know, I can see it in others. Why? Because I can see it in myself. And praise the Lord. He gave me that thorn in the flesh to humble me. And I'll tell you, when my pride gets going on me and gets out of control and I don't take rebuke from the scriptures or from my brethren who are actually brethren, Lord, to step in. And you know what? I don't want the Lord stepping in because it hurts. But yes, the snare of the devil is the snare of pride. Second Peter chapter 3. 2 Peter chapter 3. We're almost done. We're almost done. 2 Peter chapter 3. <laughs> Verses 8 on to verse 9. But beloved, be not ignorant of this one thing, that one day is with the Lord as a thousand years, and a thousand years as one day. The Lord is not slack concerning his promise, as some men count slackness, but is long-suffering to us word, not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. God wants everybody to be saved. 
There are those out there who have made their choice and are not going to get saved because they're serving Satan and he takes good care of his own. Satan does. Look at him, okay? But yes, God wants everyone to be saved. Not everybody is going to, unfortunately, because not everyone is going to come to him on his terms, but they're going to boot the door out of the way. I'm going to keep that phrase, by the way. <laughs> oh, hopefully you haven't trademarked that thing or copyrighted that there, huh? But anyway, um, yeah, there are those out there who boot the door out of the way, okay, and climb up another way, thieves and robbers, and they've made their own bed and they're going to sleep in it. But yes, God would rather all people come to repentance. Not everybody is going to. In closing, let's go to John chapter 15. Don't forget this. Okay, don't forget this. I'm almost, I, I dare to tell you, brethren, if you come across someone and your spirit within you is just being torn to pieces, it's a good thing. But if you come to someone and all it is is just, you know, you're rah, 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 your flesh is all uh, puffed up and stuff, but yet there's something on the inside of you, that spirit that ought to be the Lord Jesus Christ that is in you, the Lord is that spirit, is found like, wait a minute, that's the ministry of flesh. John chapter 15, verses 18 and 19. The world hate you. Ye know that it hated me before it hated you. If ye were of the world, the world would love his own. But because ye are not of the world, but I have chosen you out of the world, therefore the world hateth you. First John chapter two. <laughs> First John chapter two. First John chapter 2, verses 15 on to verse 17. Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. And these people, these ministers of the flesh, they love the world. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, and the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. And the world passeth away in the lust thereof. But he that doeth the will of God abideth forever. And let us never forget this about these people, these false prophets. 1 John chapter 4, verses 5 and 6. They are of the world. Therefore they speak of the world, and the world hears them. Oh, they, under the guise, the facade of Christianity. See, they use that as debate. And then when they speak, they speak of worldly things flavored with Christianese. And unfortunately, the simple and the deceived are the ones who fall for them. Verse 6, we are of God. He that knoweth God heareth us. He that is not of God heareth not us. Hereby we know the spirit of truth and the spirit of error. They are of the world, therefore the world heareth them. Because they speak of the world. Because they are of the world, they are of the flesh. And they worship flesh, dear friends. James chapter 4. One verse. Verse 4. Ye adulterers and adulteresses, know ye not that the friendship of the world is enmity with God? Whoso therefore will be a friend of the world is the enemy of God. And these people, oh, they say, oh, I hate the world. No, you don't. You're neck deep in it. You are. How many channels you got? Hmm? How many social media accounts do you have? Hmm? How many things do you put your grubby little hands on of the world and don't take steps back? Please, please, 
<laughs> Please. Brethren, people, people, dear people, we are getting closer every day to the redemption of the purchased possession, to catching away of the body of Christ before the time of change story. And as we continue onward, the this guise of fleshliness, worldliness, under the facade of Christianity, it's going to be more pronounced, more pronounced, more pronounced. You, you wait till the end of this year. You're going to really see it. You watch. It's March. You watch. Towards the end of this year, if we have it, you're going to see these fleshly people just boom, blow up. Kind of like you did last year. Why? Because these people are all about this and not the spirit of our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, who is that spirit. Okay? Be careful, brethren. Be careful. You, you, you'll know them. You'll know them by the content and when you hear them speaking. God hath not sent these people. And those who have been sent, but yet have gone off that track that are so messed up. Why? Because of this. What do you do? What do you do? Just whatever, man. Whatever. Like I said, personally, I have zero respect for someone who sends a minion rather than that person having the stones to do it themselves. I have I have no respect for a man like that. I have no respect for a man like that. None. None. But anyway, that's going to be it for this video. I know why now the Lord didn't like the video that I attempted yesterday. This is what he would want me to do, and this is how he had me to do it. So thank you, brother. Sorry it didn't come out on Monday. I... As you know, videos usually come out on Monday here. But um, thank you so much, brethren. Thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, last week was kind of a challenging week for us here. And um, thus the day will be challenging too. But the sun is out. And this is the day that the Lord hath made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Tis another day. Thank you for your prayers. Thank you for those of you who uh, help us and take care of us and pray for us. Thank you. Thank you so much. We love so many of you and we pray for every one of you. Please, brethren, keep each other in prayer. Please, brethren, converse one with another. Don't have a middleman. Go to one another. Speak with each other. Pray for one another. We love you. And we will see you in the next video. Thank you so much for watching if you do.